What's up, everybody? This is Kenja Bosley, and I am finally making my first YouTube video, and I'm so excited to do so. Um, I put in my Instagram story May 23rd that I wanted to uh, do a Q&A, and I will get into that. Uh, but first, I just want to get an introduction of who I am. Right now, it's uh, it's June 13th. I just got done watching the NBA Finals, so it's kind of late. So Definitely want to just get through this quick so I can get to edit and, you know, load this up tomorrow so, uh, for everybody to kind of see. So, uh, first of all, who I am, uh, I'm Ken John Bosley. I'm 28 years old, live in Williamsburg, Kentucky. Uh, I am, a, I just finished my first year as an assistant basketball coach at the University of the Cumberlands at NAI school here and uh, going into my second year as a, as a college basketball coach. So, uh, like I said, I want to do daily vlogs. So, You'll see a lot of workout stuff, working out players, obviously working out myself. I still hoop myself, uh, freshly retired, uh, only been a year off of retirement. So like uh, I still hoop, uh, haven't lost that itch. So you'll see see some hooping stuff from me as well. And then there's other things too. So uh, as far as how I got to this point, I'm not going to go too far back. Uh, I'll go pretty quick with it. Uh, graduated from Madison Central High School. I'm from Indianapolis, uh, but uh, ended up moving to Madison Central when my grandma got sick. She passed, uh, but still ended up staying in Richmond, Kentucky to kind of be that uh, that positive uh, light for my grandfather while uh, you know my grandmother passed. Obviously, his wife uh, kind of wanted to you know keep his spirits high. Him watching me play sports. Eventually got a scholarship offer to uh, Kentucky Wesleyan College, uh, played four years there, was all-time leading scorer in uh, conference history in the, the Great Midwest Athletic Conference, and the third all-time leading scorer in my school. And my school has, you know, a rich tradition. Uh, Corey Crowder is the all-time leading scorer, who's Jay Crowder's dad, who Jay Crowder's in the league right now. Corey Crowder played in the league himself. I think he had a five-year career. Uh, you know, my my uh, program, the Kentucky Wesleyan College program, it's, it's won eight national championships, uh, tied with the UK for the most uh, amount of national championships for an NCAA program. And I, we were NCAA Division II. So uh, played for a very good program. Uh, went to Palestine, played there for three months uh, due to political things. Uh, not going to get too into that, but, you know, Ended up having to leave there, uh, played in the NAPB due to, you know, I didn't have a lot of film. So I uh, played in that league. That league's the TBL now. It's a pretty good league. At, at the at the time I was in that league, there was a lot of veterans uh, like Smush Parker, who played with Kobe, uh, Kareem Rush, who played with Kobe and Shaq, uh, Jamario Moon, who was in the dunk contest, played with LeBron. So like, uh, there were some notable vets in there, and then obviously dudes like me that were just trying to, you know, get to that next contract. So I played in that league for two months, got some film. It took me a while to get my next job. Uh, ended up working on, under my dad at Toyota uh, just, you know, to get some money in my pockets. I uh, got to watch my sister play her senior year at Cleveland State, uh, watch my cousin play at IUPUI. Uh, both Division One programs in the, in the Horizon League. Uh, so at the time, so watched them. And after after that year, I finally was able to sign a contract in Australia. That got me kind of back on the map, played well in that league. I played in the NBL One, which is the feeder league for the NBL. So uh, LaMelo Ball is a notable name that played in the NBL. Josh Giddy played in the NBL. Uh, he played in the NBL One the NBL one when I actually was playing in the NBL one. So it was, it was a good bump, good competition there. Uh, ended up signing to go to Luxembourg where I was the, the leading scorer in uh N two, which was second, second league Luxembourg. Uh, Luxembourg's like a small country, small, rich country. It's got like old wealth, uh, you know, France, Belgium, Germany, like you can go anywhere in no time. Uh, being in Luxembourg because how small it is. Uh, I was where I lived in Stetten Bredemis. I was closer to Germany, but in Mondorf, I was closer to France. And, you know, my team was Avanti Mondorf. So uh, traveled a lot uh, when I was in Luxembourg. Had a great experience in there. Uh, COVID hit. Uh, ended up 
having to, you know, go go through COVID like everybody else. Eventually signed a contract to go to Iceland where I played second league Iceland. Uh, and we we won the championship and I was able to uh, take our team with obviously great teammates. It wasn't me by myself at all. Uh, we had a really, really, really good team. And uh, we ended up, you know, making it to the top league and Vestry signed me back to where, you know, I got to play against uh, playing a top league for the first time in the country. And uh, that was a great experience where I got to play guys like E.C. Matthews who went to Rhode Island, Glenn Watson that played at Nebraska. So like, you know, Mustafa Heron was in the league, uh, played at Auburn, was a ESPN top 100 guy. So like there was a great bump in that league. Uh, but we wasn't winning. Uh, our budget was low, so our talent uh, we had we had good talent. Don't get me wrong, but uh, you know teams just had bigger budgets than me, so bigger budgets than us. So uh, we competed. Uh, we we didn't roll over or anything like that, but uh, ended up getting delegated back to to uh, second league Iceland, and I decided to retire after that. Uh, was going through injuries, was going through a lot of mental things. So uh, ended up finally retiring, and now I'm here. I'm here at the University of Cumberland, man. So I'll get into these questions now. I'll try to get through these questions quick. I don't want this video to be any longer than 10 minutes. So let's, let's get to these questions. First question from my teammate Freaky Investory. What was the most relaxing environment uh, for me, in my opinion, and I don't know if you're asking overseas or just period. So I'll just answer period. The most relaxing environment for me is just being around family, being around good people, obviously, uh, you know, getting closer and closer to God, which, you know, I always have like my battles with that. You, you know, life distracts me a lot and I forget, you know, the main purpose of, of why I'm on earth sometimes so uh but those are those are the main things uh those things right there so now that i'm retired what's the thing i miss most about playing this is julio my former teammate in vestry uh, i just miss you know the camaraderie the locker room conversations the jokes you know uh, all those type of things competing on the floor uh having you know Having uh, road games with, where the opposition doesn't like you. Having the home games where everybody's like cheering you on. You can feed off energy. I loved all that stuff. So uh, that's the stuff I miss for sure about playing. And my favorite experience in Iceland, uh, due to also answer this question with Julio, uh, my other former teammate in Vestry, and uh, obviously winning that championship. The relationships I gained too, but uh, winning that championship uh, basketball wise was was just something that uh, something that I can't explain. You know, when I was in high school, I didn't even think that, you know, I was going to go to play college basketball at one point. So to win a championship at a pro level, uh, that was a really huge accomplishment for me uh, and obviously for us as a squad. So uh, that was definitely my favorite moment in Iceland. Favorite moments during Pro Bowl and most beautiful places I've been. Uh, this is asked by my cousin Marcus Bosley. And uh, as far as my favorite moments in Pro Bowl, um, I would probably say, you know, Iceland win the championship, obviously. Uh, I think that just, that's easy, easy number one for me. And as far as like, the most beautiful places. Every everything, every place that I've been was beautiful in its own way. You know, when I was in Palestine, I would be in Israel a lot. So I went to the Dead Sea. I went to the Holy Land, the Holy Sepulcher, where you know Jesus was crucified. Obviously, in Bethlehem, I went to where he was born. Uh, I didn't go to the Jordan River, but uh, I went to the Western Wall, where you know a lot of people you know put their hands on and they pray stuff like that. So it was just like a lot of cool things like that I got to witness. And, uh, you know, Australia was beautiful. Uh, you know, people always talk about the animals, but the animals, I thought, you know, the weather was beautiful. The the animals were cool to see. I didn't get too close to them because, you know, I don't, I don't really I don't do all that. But 
uh, it was a it was a good experience in Australia. Iceland was beautiful with the hot springs, the waterfalls, the fjords, uh, just beautiful skies. I saw the Northern Lights. So uh, every place was beautiful, beautiful in its own way. So I don't think I can really say, you know, what was the what was the most beautiful place. I I would say as far as what I experienced the most in Iceland, you know, I rode horses in the snow. So like I actually tried to experience nature a lot more in Iceland. So I guess, I guess I'll put Iceland in that just because like I actually indulged in the nature and I didn't just like look at it and just kind of go with it, I guess. So I, I'd say Iceland probably. D, my boy, Ladermi, do you prefer a mid-range pull, a mid-range pull up or a floater? Do you prefer shooting out your left or right hand? And what team gave me the most offensive freedom? Um, I would rather shoot a floater. Being a little guy, uh, definitely would rather just shoot a floater because uh, you can't always get into your mid-range depending on, you know, if you're coming off a pick, who's in drop coverage. It could be a more, uh, a, a longer guy. So you might not be all be able to get into that pull-up with floats. You can kind of get it up there faster. Uh, so I definitely say floats, uh, shooting on my left is definitely more comfortable being a right hand shooter. I think for left handers, they would probably say right, just because like it's coming right back into your shot pocket. And then as far as like my favorite moment, uh, I said favorite moment as far as like, uh, my most offensive, uh, freedom with us, with a club, it was Palestine just because the talent in Palestine, uh, didn't match up with the other clubs that I went to, that I played for, so I had a lot more responsibility. So I would say that. Uh, my boy Latrell gave me a suggestion that I should do like book reviews and stuff like that, which I definitely will look into, uh, and and like how to work out uh, the purpose of how you should work out in a basketball workout. So I'll, I'll do all those things. Great, great suggestions from my boy Trail. Um, my craziest moment playing overseas, I asked by my boy Sam, aka Prince Sebi. Uh, he's a rapper. Shout out my boy. Um, my craziest moment overseas was obviously in, in Palestine. Uh, Trump, uh, he had wanted to move the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, uh, obviously with Palestine and Israel and the conflict. Uh, it that wasn't a a good thing and as an american i never felt in danger or anything but it was weird for like those 3 4 days just because you know there's tanks outside of bethlehem which is like 10 10 minutes away from where i lived in betsahor there was protests for like 3 4 days so everything was closed in palestine uh so it was uh it was just kind of weird but uh i guess that would be the craziest craziest thing um Red, my boy went to me in Madison Central High School, asked me the adjustment and train the adjustment from college to pro and the adjustment training wise from college to pro, which to be honest with you, bro, there wasn't an adjustment for me. Like I've always kind of worked out myself. I've had trainers before. I've obviously worked out with trainers. And when you're in college, you know, you're having individuals with coaches and stuff. So that's all set up. But as far as like, what I did in the summers and all that stuff and the competition level, you know, D2 is a great competition level and there was no league that I played and I didn't play in the NBA or the Euro League. So there was no league that overwhelmed me. So as far as like any adjustment or anything like that, you know, I knew what I needed to do to be prepared and uh, I always, I always kept myself prepared. So uh, it wasn't any big adjustment. How did overseas shape me? Uh, Mariah, my teammates, uh, uh, my sister's teammate in Cleveland State. Uh, honestly, uh, it shaped me a lot. You you see so many cultures uh, and, and things like that to where it's like, you know, your perspective just starts changing as you go to country to country to country. And I think that's just how life is in general, you know, regardless of you play overseas or whatever, you know, jobs change you, uh, circumstances change you. I think that's just life. So 
uh, overseas definitely shaped me in a in a positive way, and I'll, I'll continue to change, uh, especially now that I'm not playing no more, and I'm in a, I, I guess, a different seat. So, great question. And last question. This is from a user because I didn't do this when uh, I said I was gonna do it. Uh, so I, I feel bad, but what what moves me and what keeps me going? Honestly, you know. My family, God, and who that's that's what keeps me going. Uh, what I love to do, my purpose of living, which is God, and the people that stick close to me and has always been there for me, rather I fail I fall short or not. So that's pretty pretty self explanatory for me. So anyway, man. That answers all the questions. I appreciate y'all. I really do, man. And we'll see how this first YouTube video goes. And, you know, regardless of how it goes, man, I'm excited to start vlogging and stuff. I'm finally happy to just get this off. I'll probably just let this be raw. So, uh, you know, I'm not going to do any editing on this because I just want to get a YouTube video out. So anyway, man, if you watch this, I've always wanted to say this, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I just think that's cool to say, whatever. But anyway, man, for real, appreciate y'all for anybody that, that did watch the video and uh, see y'all next vid. You did?